Good evening. I just heard the sad news from uh, Gary Jenkins that Nick Calabrese passed away. And I hope that uh, Nick was able to make his peace with the man upstairs. If not, uh, he's definitely going to have to pay for his crimes. So it's going to be either heaven or hell for Nick Calabrese. But God bless his family. Now, before Nick Calabrese turned to a life of crime with his brother Frank Calabrese, the 26th Street crew, he actually did a stint in the military, served our country, although I'm not sure if he did any combat. But when he came home, he got a couple of jobs with the city, like most mob guys do, and eventually became an iron worker and built a landmark, the John Hancock Building. No, no one witness has ever done more damage to the Chicago outfit than Nick Calabrese. He got on the stand, and not only did he testify against his brother, but he talked about his involvement with 14 mur murders, and he gave the FBI information on another 20-something murders. I found him credible for the most part, except the few lies he told about Rocky and Felice being there and Jimmy Marcello. Now, while Nick Calabrese was testifying against his brother, Frank Calabrese, on all the murders that they participated in, at times uh, Frankie would shake his head, pound his fist on the table, laugh out loud. And then when Frankie the Breeze got on the stand, he basically said that Nick Calabrese is the one that committed all these brutal crimes. He also told Nicky Ferriola that according to the Bible, it's okay to kill your brother. Nick Calabrese testified that him and his brother reported directly to the boss of the 26th Street crew, Angelo the Bull LaPetria. And during the family secrets trial, it came out that LaPetria told his brother Jimmy the Lapper that something should have been done about the Calabrese brothers years ago, meaning they should have been shelved, put into two different crews, or even killed. Angelo was right. Now, when you first looked at Nick Calabrese, he didn't look like some big, tough mob guy killer. Kind of a thin guy, sat there in a bluish-gray jumpsuit, never once looked over at his brother or Jimmy Marcello or Joey Lombardo, showed no remorse at all, pretty stone cold, had a pretty good memory, and went into great detail on 14 unsolved murders that he participated in. Now, a pair of murders that Nick Calabrese testified that he participated in was Tito Ortiz and a Polish guy. The Polish guy was just an innocent guy that happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Tito uh, was selling drugs. He did an unsanctioned hit for the outfit. And now the mob bosses wanted him dead. Nick Calabrese testified that him and Jimmy DeForti, they blasted them with high-powered shotguns, killing both of the guys. During the Family Secrets trial, Nick Calabrese testified that once a week he would drop off thousands of dollars in cash to Angela Petria's fortress here in Bridgeport. He would stuff it in a barbecue's mitt. If the mitt was facing up, Angela would look out the window and know that the mitt was full of cash. If the mitt was facing down, Angela would look out the window and know there was no money in there. Now, prior to the Family Secrets trial, Nick Calabrese was actually in Milan Federal Prison with Jimmy Marcello, and Nick was complaining how his brother wasn't paying him for all the work that he did. And Jimmy said that he was going to start sending $5,000 a month to Nick's wife to take care of his family, and when he gets out of jail, he could come work for Jimmy. Now, the highlight of the Family Secrets trial is when Nick Calabrese testified on the brutal beatdown of the Spalacho brothers. He said they were all wearing gloves. When Michael came down the stairs first, Nick greeted him with a handshake. Then he immediately dove for his legs and held them while Louis the Mooch strangled him with a rope. Tony asked to say a prayer. Prayer was denied, and Tony was beat and stomped to death. Now imagine what these four guys are talking about. On the left, you got Nick Calabrese's best friend, John Thakarada, Jimmy LaPetria there, 
Johnny Apes, and his brother Angelo Lapetria, four top brass in the 26 3 crew. Nick Calabrese testified that Fekarada wouldn't get in the car with anybody and that he, he trusted Nick. They planned to bomb up, blow up a dentist. Nick pulled out a gun, shot Fekarada. This was Nick's first hit, his first murder, Michael Hambone Albergo. He made the fatal mistake at the club saying if he's going away, he's not going away alone. Calabrese brothers killed him. They buried him in the parking lot where the new Comiskey Park is being built. Nick Calabrese testified he was so scared he pissed his pants, but luckily he was wearing dark color pants. If his brother would have found out he pissed his pants, Nick said his brother would have killed him right there on the spot. Now, aside from being a good killer, Nick Calabrese was a good extortionist too. Like the time he extorted uh, money from Victor Cacciatoria on Angela Petra's behalf. Nick cut off a puppy's head, put it on his car. Then he tied some nooses around some mice and rat, hung them from the antenna in his car. And lastly, shot out the back window as Cacciatore is about to start the car. They said, how much did Angelo Petria pay you? Nick said, he didn't pay me anything. Now, most of us were a little surprised when we found out by Nick's testimony all the heavyweights that were there that day when the Splatchos got killed. Men like Joe Nagel, Sam Carlisi, No Knows the Franzo, Rocky and Felice, Louis Marino, Fakarada, Jimmy LaPetri, and a few others Nick didn't know. I think the bosses were there because they were personally wanted to be there to get their licks in. Some people didn't believe Nick. Now here's a real rap move Nick did. He testified that Jimmy Marcello made good on his promise. He had his brother Mikey Marcello drop off $5,000 a month cash every month like clockwork to uh, Nick's wife, and Jimmy also was on tape in prison talking to his brother that Nick Calabrese, that that money was a real good investment, and Mikey said, I hope so, pal. Now, here's just one of the 14 murders that Nick Calabrese personally participated in. He talked about in great deal how hard it was to kill trucking executive Michael Cagnoni after failed attempts. They almost accidentally blew up his wife. This was the only time I see Nick get emotional, got a little teary-eyed that he accidentally killed Mrs. Cagnoni. And during court, she actually yelled and called him the devil. Nick testified that John Mendel was the leader of the burglary crew that broke into Tony Ocardo's home. And Ronnie Jarrett lured him to his mother-in-law's garage in the promise of a big score. When he got there, he was jumped by Nick, Ronnie Jarrett, Frank Calabri strangled him, handed Nicky the knife, and he told Nick, you do it, and Nick slit his throat ear to ear. Now, these two guys here, Vincent Moretti, he was one of the burglars involved in the Tony Arcardo break-in. He was actually going around town wearing Tony Arcardo's cufflinks. Uh, not only was this guy strangled, along with his friend Donald Reno by Jimmy Marcello, Nick Calabrese, and others. But they uh, stabbed up and tortured Vince Moretti. And Strangers in the Night was playing on the jukebox. So Nick and Frank would refer to this murder as Strangers in the Night. Now, another one of Nick's victims, another one of the murders he testified to was Paul Haggerty. They said how they had a hell of a time putting a tail on this guy. What they didn't know until they found out later was he would take the bus, the train, and work the midnight shift at Marshall Fields. But when they finally did grab him, Nick said he put his foot on the guy's neck, using it as leverage as he pulled the rope and his brother pulled the rope, strangling him. Now, without the fine work of these two FBI agents, Mike Massis and Tom Burgess, there probably wouldn't have been a family secret trial. They're the ones that eventually got Nick Calabrese to trust them got him the flip. At first, at first, Nick lied to these guys and said that John Thakarada picked him up and brought him to the Splatro house. And then later on, he said he better tell him the truth. And he told him Jimmy Marcello was the one that picked him up. Now here's Judge James Zagel. This guy's like the king of the Dirksen Federal Building. He presided over the Family Secrets trial and gave every defendant their sentence 
when it came to Nick Calabrese. He actually uh, complimented Nick and said, without guys like Nick Calabrese, they can never break the outfit. He gave Nick Calabrese a sentence of only 12 years. With time served, Nick Calabrese only did six years and got out. 